Hi, welcome back to another SwiftFox build project update video. For the past few days, I've been working on the door frame and window frame on the passenger side of the aircraft, and I'm close to being able to uh, bond those in now to the fuselage. Before I did get started working on this whole aspect of the project, I watched a video by another builder, a guy by the name of Aaron Butte. And in that video, he was talking with Brandon Peterson of KitFox about how KitFox does this process at the factory and what tips and tricks they might have uh, for us at home uh, doing it ourselves. That was a super useful video, really informative. Um, it really took a lot of the ambiguity and confusion that at least I had coming into the, the process. And I'd highly recommend it for anyone uh, about to do the same. I won't go through everything they kind of covered in the video, but I'll summarize some of the tips that at least I got from the video and utilized when uh, I was working on it. The first tip was about the uh, order to work on the pieces and, and kind of put them in. So the uh, suggested order was uh, this piece first, this second, third, fourth, fifth, and then the last piece uh, down here being the sixth. That was uh, super intuitive and it really did make getting all of the pieces in uh, a lot easier, knowing um, that the, the piece you'd put in before gave you a guide of where your next piece was going in. The uh, second tip was about uh, trimming uh, the parts down. So every single piece is need, gonna need to get trimmed on both ends. And you want to be careful that you don't, you know, focus on one end and take too much material off it, leaving yourself short on the other. Uh, how I did this was um, I pretty much just centered up the piece along the bar that it was gonna be uh, put into. And then I would mark on both ends uh, for cuts. And I was marking like quite conservatively, um, you know, the piece actually wouldn't fit in the first few times after cutting. So I was just continually trimming away on both sides to get um, it to fit in. And that, that worked really well. Uh, the third tip, is about um, uh, the joints. So at KitFox, they'll overlap joints quite a lot, kind of an example being down here, and then using uh, relief cuts in those joints to be able to form and shape um, that joint to a contour um, that you, you end up wanting. So I followed that as well. So as you can see here, I've got uh, quite an overlap on these two pieces and then um, some relief cuts up here. And, uh, I, you know, I may even, uh, extend these relief cuts just a bit more as I'm going to get to that final shape that I want. Fourth tip was about the rear pieces here uh, for the window. They come in two bundles and uh, they're, they have specific parts in them in the bundle. So for example, uh, one of the bundle is going to have the right top and left bottom, and then the other uh, bundle will have the left top and right bottom. And you don't want to get these mixed up. So uh, when I was uh, kind of taking all the parts out to start working on this, I immediately put a piece of tape and I put which one was right top, right bottom, et cetera. And in fact, I marked, I marked them all. You know, you've got the rear joggle and then uh, rear joggle and lower joggle. So marking them all means I can't really um, uh, mix them up. The last tip that I got out of it was uh, for this piece of angle that's gonna get installed down here, it's where the fabric is going to meet the uh, boot pile, essentially. And you want to get this angle to be um, kind of out a bit from the fuselage so that it's actually flush with the outer edge of uh, the boot cowl. So I'm fortunate I have, actually have my boot cowl here with me. So I've just used uh, some clamps to kind of like hold it up onto the fuselage. And then I can position this piece of angle as needed to get this smooth. So they were kind of the ones I followed and it made the process super easy. I'm going to get started now on the uh, pilot side. I did the passenger side first because I was a little bit afraid if I messed something up, I didn't, wouldn't want to see it all the time, but uh, I'm really happy with how it all came out. So I'm just going to do the exact same uh, on the pilot side. I have some uh, super fill on order as well. And uh, when that arrives, I'll be able to, um, or hopefully I'll have everything kind of bonded in at that point. And then I'll use Superfill kind of on all the joints just to smooth them out and make them look kind of like a, a seamless one piece. Uh, 
So before I start working on the pilot side, what I might do is I'll just do a quick pan on uh, all of the joints, just so anyone in the future who's doing this can kind of see where, where at least I overlapped and kind of some of the cuts I made. And it just might be useful for someone. All right, all the door joggles and window frame pieces have been uh, cut to fit and I've pilot drilled the holes to the rivets and I'm holding everything together with these uh, number 40 uh, Clicos. And I started looking at all of the junctions where uh, two or more pieces are meeting and looking at getting rid of the, you know, the excess material and, and, and having a nice kind of curve or transition for the uh, fabric to, uh, to be glued to. Now, while I was looking at uh, this junction here and, and the one on the other side, I remembered that there is this uh, stringer piece here that gets attached to the side of the fuselage and then it comes in here and it interfaces with this uh, junction. So I got the stringer out and I've kind of roughly uh, hung it where it's uh, going to be and I wanted to see exactly where it was going to interface in this junction and I'm, I'm really glad I did because as you can kind of see here, it's, it's a little bit tight quarters. So I've made this little uh, black curved line here. That's what I want to uh, trim off as my uh, curve. And then these two straight lines, both horizontal and vertical, they're showing um, where the rivet's going to need to go for this stringer piece. So uh, right here where they intersect. Now, the way I've configured uh, my door joggles is this uh, bottom piece here is the outside of the overlap. And this uh, top vertical piece here is the underside of the overlap. And where the rivet needs to go, there's not enough material uh, on this outside overlap for me to rivet through this. As you can see here, it's going to be far too close to the edge. And I'm also hesitant to cut off any of the, the overlap material here because for two reasons. One is that um, it provides a nice uh, bonding surface for uh, to bond this underside of the overlap, which will make you know, the superfill and transition work a lot easier. And the second is, if I trim it off, it's going to be too close to the edge for then this rivet that goes here, so kind of defeating the purpose entirely. Now the rivets are flush head rivets. So what I think I'm going to do is I will uh, rivet from this un the underside of the overlap, so this piece here, right where this uh, 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 cross is. So I'll rivet from this piece into the stringer, and then because the rivet is a flush head, it'll be uh, flush with the, the rest of this um, uh, piece of the joggle that this outer overlap piece will just will sit on top nice. And you know, this is all going to be high sold and bonded in as well. So uh, I'm glad I did that so I can kind of figure out exactly um, uh, what I need to do here. And I have to get these stringers installed and ready to go for when I'm bonding and riveting these in. So I have a dimple die on order to um, dimple these holes so while you know still waiting on that I'm going to get working on uh, installing these stringers so that when that arrives I'll be able to bond and uh, rivet everything together.
So the stringer's window and door frames are now fully bonded in and riveted to the fuselage. And they're looking really good. I have to say I'm really happy with the progress so far. A couple of things I might mention. Eagle-eyed viewers might have seen that when I was uh, bonding and riveting in this uh, fabric uh, attach angle that I didn't have this rivet hole dimpled. Now, it probably would have been fine. Um, you know, there was enough high saw in under the head and it wasn't sitting too proud of the piece uh, that the body fill probably would have covered it. But, you know, in the interest of doing things correctly, I, I figured I'll just drill it out, dimple and, and re-rivet it again. And, you know, that took kind of all of 10 minutes and it is much more flush now and, and seamless in there. So, you know, did that both this side and the pilot side and, you know, took 10 minutes and was kind of worth doing in the end. But I'm really happy with how this whole uh, angle piece turned out. You know, the transition here to um, this part of the fuselage and then down here, you know, a little bit of body work will make it all um, super nice. Other thing uh, to mention is over here on the uh, pilot side. So the, uh, this lower uh, joggle in the door frame, I had to put quite a lot of relief cuts in it to get it to sit into the frame correctly. Now, I'm not sure why I had to do that on this side and I didn't have to do it on you know, the passenger side, but I suspect that when I was doing the kind of initial cuts to fit this piece in um, and I was test fitting it, I might have kind of forced it in and that might have kinked this kind of tubular structure here, which meant it didn't want to sit um, down anymore. So I just, you know, started making relief cuts to uh, kind of relieve where everything was bowing and felt it was pressure. And that kind of got everything back uh, squared away. And then when I was bonding it in, I just used some clamps to um, to hold it there to make sure it didn't maybe pop up with the with the um, high saw in under it. But yeah, other than that, everything's turned out uh, super nice. And next I'm going to be learning how to use Superfill and starting the bodywork, and I suspect it'll be uh, days and days and days of sanding. And just like that, the door frame and window frame bodywork is done. Well, it took a couple of weeks to get to this point, but I'm happy with where it is now, and I don't think I can improve it anymore with my current skill set, so I'm just going to call it done and move on. A couple of things I'll point out. Um, I used high sol with micro balloons uh, mixed in to kind of build up some of the uh, joints where the overlaps were, and then used the super fill over that to get the um, uh, final finish and smooth texture. So you can kind of see in some of them, there's a bit of the dark gray of the high sol and then the blue of the super fill. And I'm really happy with how everything kind of blended together. Um, all of the, the joints are very smooth. And even this lower pilot side joggle where I had to cut all of the uh, relief cuts is uh, it's nice and smooth. I did make one really big mistake um, right at the start. Um, generally when I'm trying anything new, I'm gonna do it in a small area or in a small space or a small experiment to get a feel of um, what I'm doing and what I'm working with. And I did that with the super fill. I picked a couple of the uh, joints and I put on some super fill, came back the next day, sanded it down. And I was really happy with that. I got, got a good feel for how the Superfill sands and how it goes on. So I lashed on Superfill onto all the rest of the joints and went on my day. And when I came back uh, the next day to start sanding them all down, I discovered that the Superfill hadn't hardened at all. After a couple of minutes of scratching my head, I realized that I hadn't mixed it correctly. Um, I had mixed it one to one, which is what you do for high sol, but the Superfill is a two to one mix. So it was never going to harden and it was pretty much all junk. So I spent the next two days kind of scraping all of that high uh, super fill off and sanding off the last bit of kind of sticky residue that was left to get the door and window frames back to a point where I could put on the super fill again. So a little bit frustrating, but you live and learn. I have since annotated the lids of the super fill with one and two so that, you know, when I go to mix again, my memory will be jogged and I, I won't ever make that uh, mistake again, hopefully. So uh, going to move on from here. Uh, I still have to finish the center console install and I have everything I need to do that now. So that's going to be next. And I'm thinking then I'm going to install the uh, header tank, then the autopilot servo uh, kit, and then the trim position sensor kit. So I'll end this video here. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, hope to see you in the next one.